good afternoon students so welcome to your biology class online and uh, today we'll discuss our second chapter that is structure of chromosomes your first chapter was uh, cell organelles and cell that i have already uh, given you through the link also as well as i have taught in the classes also so uh, first chapter i hope uh, that is clear that you have already studied in 8th and 9th standard also that was just a revision so in your first chapter you have read about a organelle that is called nucleus and nucleus contains chromosomes in it that also you have studied so let us see what the chromosomes are chromosomes are actually the condensed chromatin fibers these chromatin fibers are the fibers which uh, um, these are the thread like structures and these thread like structures are present inside the nucleus these thread like structures they actually combine and coil together to form the chromosomes during the cell division when the cell divides then only these chromatin fibers they uh, join together and form the chromosomes so these chromosomes are the carrier of the hereditary material and these carry our hereditary characters from one generation to the next generation so these chromatin fibers they itself are formed of two components and these two components are called first one is your dna and second one is your histones so dna is uh, about 40% and histone is 60% uh, these are present in this uh, amount in the chromatin fibers so chromatin fibers uh, this uh, histone is a protein and dna what it is first we will see the shape of a dna it was first time given by rosalind franklin and this rosalind franklin only gave the shape after that two scientists they these were named watson and crick these are two separate people watson and crick they gave the structure of dna and this structure of dna was proposed by watson and crick and they were awarded with the nobel prize for this structure so this structure was given you can go through your textbooks also there you will get it so your dna in turn it is made up of three parts first one is your phosphate phosphate second one is your uh, sugar and third is your nitrogenous base this in our short form i am writing nb nitrogenous base so dna is made up of three things that is phosphate sugar and nitrogenous bases so these all the three uh, things combine to form dna now we'll see how phosphate sugar and these three things combine so first i'll talk of this nitrogenous bases nitrogenous bases are of four types it is adenine guanine thymine and cytosine i have written the initials of these and these are represented this way only uh, only the initial letter is written so initial a is for adenine g is for guanine t is for thymine and c is for cytosine so all these four nitrogenous bases are present and these four nitrogenous bases one by one means they combine uh, with this uh, sugar and phosphate and then only they make a whole dna so dna is a double stranded structure double stranded means there are two thread like structures and two thread like structures are wound together to form the whole dna so what is the arrangement that we will see this is phosphate phosphate is uh, linked with a pentose sugar pentose sugar means that it is having five carbons in it 1 2 3 4 5 so these are the five carbons and uh, this in turn is again linked with a nitrogenous base similarly this is one thread uh, again we will have phosphate here then uh, sugar here and uh, nitrogenous base here right then uh, this is a single thread then uh, for us this next thread here again having a nitrogenous base here this is again joined with a sugar and this again in turn is joined with a phosphate similarly we will again have a nitrogenous base here this is again joined with a sugar and this is joined with a phosphate so these are the phosphate sugar and nitrogenous base this nitrogenous bases can be i have told you there are four nitrogenous bases so in place of nitrogenous base i have written here i keep a a will combine with t here i can write g g will combine with c 
So this is very important to see that A always combines with T and T always combines with A. So uh, between A and T, there are double bond. And G and C, there is a triple bond. So these double bondings and triple bondings, these are the essential uh, parts or these are the holding bonds of whole DNA structure. The DNA structure is holded by these double and triple bonds. So this is very important to uh, mention here that A and T, A and T only combines with each other. A will never combine with G. A will never combine with C or T will never combine with G or T will never combine with C. A will always combine with T and T will always combine with A. Similarly, G will always combine with C and C will always combine with G. And G and C are having triple bond between them. A and T are having double bonds. So this is, this, uh, is a single strain. This is a um, other strain. So we can have two threads like this. So one thread, this one thread is represented by, this is the molecular structure of this thread. Then again we are having a other strain. This is the molecular structure of this thread. So in a DNA, these are uh, wind like this among each other and we can say it like this, this way. This way, the DNA structure, or the, both the threads are combining together to form the whole backbone of a DNA. So this is a DNA and DNA is 40%. So again, I revise that phosphate, sugar and nitrogenous bases are there in a DNA. And DNA is made up of these three parts and these three parts are arranged this way, right? Next one is your histone. Histone is a protein as I told you and this protein, these 8 proteins, 8 molecules are clubbed together and these are wind uh, by the DNA coil. DNA is uh, coiled around these uh, 8 histone proteins and the histone proteins are in a center. We can take an example, if I take a ball and uh, coil it with a rope. Uh, around it then we can means uh, similarly similar way these histones are also bound eight proteins are there and these eight proteins are bound by a dna outside so this is the histone and these are the proteins actually this is the histone protein when bound with a dna this is called nucleosome right so dna and histones this is the a whole picture of a chromosome, how the chromosome or a chromatin fiber is made. So these are the two important components that you have to remember. Then next we are having the structure of a structure of a chromosome. Chromosome structure is like this. We are having a centromere over here and centromere this type of flower like structure we have to make and this flower type of structure, the center portion, this is called centromere. This is centromere and these two, this uh, structures, these are called chromatids. These are called chromatids. So this is a chromatid and these two are called sister chromatids. Sister chromatids means these are the two pairs and uh, the center portion which is holding them together is called a centromere. So centromere with a um, chromatid. So uh, these chromatids, sister chromatids are actually made up of the chromatin fibers which we have discussed earlier. So these chromatin fibers together they have clubbed to form the chromatid. Right. So students. Today I am taking only this much portion. It is very important to uh, remember this and understand this so that you can read the chapter further. Because further we are having cell division that is very important aspect and if this is not clear you will not be able to understand cell division. So please go through the book and make this portion very clear. If you are having any doubt do call me or message me on my personal number and uh, please I request you to please go through the text and go through this. Thank you.